Hey, let's learn some banjo. Hey you guys, Johnny Banjo here with The Banjo File. Thanks for stopping by. So we've been talking a bit about uh, what claw hammer is and uh, the, what the right hand stroke is and why it's so important. And uh, we've covered how to make your claw and how to use it to strike the strings. And now we want to move on to talking about what, what's the hand motion? What is that like? Uh, because the question can, can arise as to sort of how, where does the hand motion come from? And some people say it comes from the forearm, that uh, you hold your claw rigid and your forearm does all the motion. And um, that's true. Some claw hammer players do play like that. Um, one that immediately comes to mind is Grandpa Jones. I remember uh, seeing him live at the Grand Ole Opry when I was uh, 15 years old and uh, noticing that, yeah, he tended to wail on the banjo using his entire forearm. I'm going to put a link in the description to a video of him uh, playing um, Old Dan Tucker, and um, you could see that that's exactly how, how his motion is. And by the way, you'll also notice in the video that... Uh, um, he preferred to play uh, claw hammer on a uh, resonator banjo, actually. Um, but um, generally speaking, uh, I think, um, just my opinion, that it's preferable to play claw hammer from the wrist, actually, uh, rather than to involve the entire forearm. Um, and there's a few reasons for that. One is it just gives you um, uh, finer muscle control. Um, and it's um, just more nuanced playing. Economy of, mo of motion is a good thing. Um, it gives you um, just better accuracy, I think. If, if, if you're just using a, a minimal amount of motion, that way your arm is anchored over the banjo and it's just your hand doing most of the movement from the wrist, um, that, that enables you to um, uh, stay well anchored in three-dimensional space and have better accuracy, have better um, control over your dynamics, that is, your volume, um, and allows you to give um, more, um, more nuanced, um, delicate kind of playing, if that's what you want. Um, some people really like to wail on their banjo. They have what I call a heavy claw, and um, that's the style that they like to play, and that's fine. I prefer more nuanced kind of playing. So what's that motion like? Um, well, let's start by um, going to your door. Go to your front door. Knock on the door like you're a visitor. Knocking on somebody's door. Knock, knock, knock. Oh, Knock, knock, knock. Come in. Knock, knock, knock. Door's open. Knock on the table. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Knock on wood. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Notice how that uh, motion feels. Notice where it's coming from. It comes from the wrist. It comes from the wrist, and it's a forward motion. A forward motion. It goes this way. Not lateral, like this. Forward motion, like this. Knock, knock, knock. Whoa! Knock, knock, knock. Come in already. Knock on your banjo. Not, not too hard. Don't punch through the head. Just lightly. Below the strings. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Oh! Knock, knock, knock. Anybody home? Knock, knock, knock. Notice where that, how that feels, where the motion is coming from. Again, it is a forward motion. It is motion like this. Not a lateral motion like this. It's a forward motion. A motion into, directly into the banjo. Not across the strings, into the banjo. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Now what I want you to do, knock, knock, knock. Instead of knocking with this knuckle here, like you were knocking on a door, Transition to knocking with this first knuckle, the one that comes uh, right below your fingernail. Knock with that knuckle instead on the banjo. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock, knock. Hello? 
knock, knock, knock. Notice how that feels. Notice where the motion is coming from. It's coming from the wrist. Your arm is anchored on the armrest. Motion comes from the wrist. It is forward directly into the banjo. Knock, knock, knock. Now knock with your fingernails. Use your fingernails. So you're tapping on the banjo head with your fingernails. It's the same knocking motion. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. Keep doing that. Notice how it feels. Now make your claw. We talked in an earlier video about how to make your claw. You curl your fingers up loosely. You have your striking finger jutting out just a little bit beyond the other fingers so that the surface of the, the back surface of the fingernail of, of that particular finger is the first one that strikes. And uh, um, you're holding that striking finger rigidly against the other curled up fingers so that it forms one whole unit. Your, your hand becomes one whole unit. <clears throat> Use that claw now to tap on the banjo head so that only the striking finger should be striking the head. Now I want you to do it over the strings, to come over the strings and do it. I'm just bouncing off the strings here. As I do that, I just do the knock, knock, knock motion. I'm doing it over the strings. I'm randomly hitting strings. I'm not aiming for anything. Every now and then notice I'm sounding a string, right? I'm sounding a string kind of clearly. Most of the time I'm just sort of bouncing off the strings. Ooh, every time, every now and then. Ooh, every now and then. Oh, every now and then. I'm catching a string and making it sound like that. Try to do that deliberately. Try to make this knocking motion, the same knocking motion like you'd knock on a door or knock on a table, only using your claw and doing it over the strings. I'm doing it so hard that I'm going through past the string and slapping right into the banjo head. That's okay. Do it that way. Do it on the, just the first string. That's what I'm doing. Do it just on the first string. That's the motion. That's the hand motion. It's a knocking motion. It is into the banjo, directly into the banjo. It's not across the strings like this, like you're strumming. It's into the banjo. You're punching through the string, aiming more for the head rather than aiming for the strings. Because if you aim just for the strings, you're, you're likely not to get good follow through. You're likely to have your fingernail tap the string and sort of bounce off the string and notice I'm not getting any sound that way. Because I'm aiming for the string. I want to go aim past the string so that I push against, my nail pushes against the string as I go down pushes down against the string, pushes the string into the banjo with enough force that it, as, my, as the momentum of my hand continues past the string, the string slides off the free edge of my fingernail and sounds. I'm deliberately pounding right in, tapping right into the banjo head to, to emphasize the motion. Using this kind of motion, that's a knocking motion that goes right into the banjo head, um, does a number of things for you. It gives you, rather than a lateral motion, it gives you better, the up and down knocking motion gives you better tone and control. Um, you're not, it, rather than going laterally, um, you're not liable to uh, engage accidental brushes. If you're going laterally, you're likely to accidentally hit more than one string. It's a little harder to target a specific string if you're moving laterally because um, now you have to be more precise. Otherwise, you're, you're likely to um, strike a lower or higher string than the one you intended to strike. This knocking motion that goes into the banjo uh, facilitates a technique called drop thumb, which 
is, is advanced for beginners. We're not going to cover that uh, while we're um, uh, covering just the basic clyhammer stroke, but it's one that you, you definitely want to start getting into pretty quickly once, once you've got this uh, basic clyhammer stroke developed. Um, and, and the reason this, this particular motion, this knocking motion facilitates it, well, what, what is drop thumb anyway? It's when you take your thumb that normally lives on the fifth string and you drop it to a lower string. So instead of, I might do this. I'm alternating between the fifth string and the second string. Getting my thumb in there between the third and the second string is a lot easier if my motion is directly into the banjo rather than laterally across the strings. Laterally across the strings makes it much harder for my thumb to get in between the strings I needed to get in between. It makes it more likely that it's gonna catch on my, that I'm gonna grab the wrong string or that it's gonna catch on my thumbnail or do other weird things. When you do brushes, that is more of a lateral motion. So knock on wood, knock on wood, that's the knocking motion. It's entirely a forward motion. But imagine you're brushing your hair. You, I get a brush in my hand and I'm brushing my hair. That's more of a lateral motion. So the knocking motion is a forward motion. The brushing motion is more of a lateral motion. So if I'm doing a brush on the banjo, I want to sweep across the strings. Yes, of course. That is, it starts out as a knocking motion. But it, necessarily translates into a lateral motion once I'm making contact with the strings um, so that I'm brushing across the strings. So a brush is more of a lateral motion and it's lateral this way and it's um, and it brushes across the strings but striking individual strings is much more knocking into the banjo, a knocking motion, just like you're knocking on a door. So what I want you to do is, is practice that, try it. Try it just on the first string, keep doing that, striking the first string. Just keep doing that until you could do that. And I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be sounding the fifth string. I'm, I'm, I'm only meaning to show you the uh, first string. Just keep striking the first string. Again, it's okay if you miss and you accidentally just hit the head. It's okay if you sometimes miss and get the second string. It's okay if sometimes you don't get good tone, you bang into it, you muffle it with your hand a little bit maybe. Um, you're just learning this. So um, play around with it until you can consistently do that knocking motion and your fingernail strikes that first string pretty accurately and gets a good tone each time. Then try alternating that with brushes. And then when, when you're comfortable doing that and you can do that fairly accurately and it feels good, do, you know, do that 379 times first. And then when, you, when it feels really good, then you might start trying to uh, target the inner strings. This is harder. It requires more precision, more control, especially so that you're not um, uh, accidentally going too hard and punching through into other strings and creating an accidental brush. Um, and that's it. Just keep doing that for right now. There'll be another video where we talk more about, uh, about the claw hammer stroke and we continue developing it. You're not there yet. You're not there yet. You're just getting used to various elements of the motion. Um, so far we've covered um, how to form your claw and how to strike at the strings. And now we've talked more about what the hand motion is and what it feels like and what it looks like. Um, 
and um, we're going to continue to uh, develop uh, the entire claw hammer stroke in future videos. So I hope you'll join me for that. See you then. Take care. <laughs>